happy Yardy Gras or happy Mardi Gras. Um, <laughs> I've decided to make this video for people who are considering attempting making their own Yardy Gras props. Uh, I do recommend that if you're going for something big and elaborate that you hire a local artist. They have way more experience than you. But if you'd like to do something simple, uh, maybe a weekend project like this Florida Lee here, uh, this is a simple and inexpensive way to uh, make your very own Yardy Grub. Right, I've set up some of the uh, materials that you're going to need for uh, this project uh, here in my little studio. I have some wallpaper paste. Uh, this is about $20 for this whole thing. You can get smaller uh, amounts of it for about 10 I recommend using this over the old wheat paste paper mache any day because this stuff doesn't mold. Uh, I, unless you're a big fan of mold, you can go to the, the wheat paper uh, paste uh, uh, method, but this stuff is, is awesome and hardcore. Uh, I would also suggest that you get some masking tape. You may need it to tape up a few holes here or there. Uh, I put my little Japanese pull saw as a symbolic saw. You can use this one. These are really great little saws um, because you're going to need to cut your wood uh, if you decide that you're going to make something large enough to have a frame. Uh, the wood could be, uh, uh, you know, two by fours, any scrap wood you have lying around. We're going to talk about frames here in a second. Uh, builder's paper, I do recommend. Um, this whole roll, I think, cost me $10. Uh, you may be able to get smaller rolls, uh, but this stuff's really great. It's just like, uh, it's sort of like the paper that you would get uh, at brown paper bags at the grocery store. You could also use brown paper bags from the grocery store. Um, I prefer this stuff because it's already nice and flat and it's in a roll, but brown paper bags would work great. This is what you're going to use with your, uh, with your paste to uh, make a surface on your project after you've built a frame. Uh, my symbolic brush for any kind of brush that you want to use uh, for your paint or maybe for your paper mache. I just use my hands for the paper mache, but in the case that you want to use a brush, uh, the paint that I got, you can see I have some nice Mardi Gras colors here. Make sure that it's exterior if you're going to be hanging your prop outside. Uh, these things are made out of paper and they can never be tr totally waterproof, but they can be water resistant and having exterior paint is going to help you with that. I also have my trusty uh, cordless hot glue gun. This is a big investment. Whether or not you want to go um, go this route or not, it's uh, one of my favorite things that was ever invented. Uh, cordless, and I always buy two batteries and keep one of them in the charger at all times. I also have a nice big box of hot glue sticks for all the hot glue and I'm going to do. Watch out, these things get hot. I have a few uh, nice burns from using these over the years. Um, you're going to need a good supply of uh, cardboard. Um, you can get fresh cardboard. This was some fresh cardboard donated to me. When I say fresh, never used, so it's not all wrinkly. Um, but you could use any kind of cardboard. Uh, you're going to need plenty depending on the size of the thing that you're going to make. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you may need some screws for your wood frame, however you want to build it. Um, and uh, a few other little things, but I'll go over those. This is pretty much it for the starter. And I would say you could probably come by all of this without the hardcore hot glue gun for probably about 50 bucks. Always a good idea to print out your design. This way you can draw on it and uh, decide what your frame is going to look like. Um, I know I'm making this prop. It's going to be three foot wide and four foot tall. Um, the majority of the balance in this piece is right across here. So I'm going to need to have a big board that goes right across this spot right here. And that's going to be my 2x4 right here. I've already cut my 2x4 to three feet, 3 feet. And this will just give a little extra support. One of the things that I say when you're doing this is if you're going to go 2 foot wide, uh, larger than 2 foot wide in any direction, you need to consider a frame. Because these things will get heavy, believe it or not. Paper... And cardboard can actually get pretty heavy and uh, they'll start to droop so you got to give them a little bit of support nothing super fancy uh, but definitely something to hold on to 
I'm putting the two by four here across the center because this person who has commissioned the piece is gonna uh, hang it on their front porch. And the two by four will allow them, uh, cause I'm gonna leave it open on the back, you'll see, uh, to wrap a, you know, a rope or some sort of attachment to their front porch railing and then go through the back here. Um, nice and beefy two by four, not too bad. Uh, and then what I'm planning on doing is making just a, a sort of a little triangular support here. Oops. Triangular support here with two little pieces of wood, nothing, nothing real big. And probably going to do something similar, but maybe a little bit wider here on the bottom. Sort of looks like a little, a little witch's face. If we put the eyes here. Oh, no. Um, so that's what I'm going to uh, build as far as the frame goes. And I'll show you what that looks like. Finished building my frame. Uh, I used six screws. Uh, be sure uh, if you're going to use screws to uh, drill some pilot holes because if you're using scrap wood, it'll split on you if you don't. Um, I did use a drill for this. You're welcome to not use a drill, but drills make it go faster. I did take, take some care to uh, find the center, make sure all my little pieces were centered because this piece is pretty symmetrical. Um, it's time to move on to the cardboard. Let me show you the technique I used to uh, tear the cardboard. Okay, now we need to make a whole bunch of strips of cardboard that look like this. Uh, I've already torn a whole bunch of them, and I wanted to show you the way that I tear them. Rather than cutting them, it's better to tear them because then you can overlap them and um, they won't stick through your paper too much. It's important that you tear um, across the grain. I know cardboard has grain. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not there, but it's the corrugation, sort of like these little bumps. Uh, you need to tear down across the corrugation, across the grain, rather than with the grain. Uh, this will make a stronger strip uh, for you to build your armature with. Um, I learned this technique from Mr. Stevens, who, uh, <laughs> who still builds Mardi Gras floats whenever I worked with him a million years ago. Um, and I still use it today, but it's basically keeping your hand sort of like a corkscrew um, and, and tearing with, uh, with your index finger and your thumb. So you can see, I kind of push down. It's hard to do this on the video. Just pushing down like this, all the way, all the way across you ever used one of those old can openers. I think it might be the same technique. Same technique. So there's strip number one. After you've done it a few times, it becomes a, a nice piece of muscle memory. You can see, I'm just using my finger as a lever, going like this, all the way, all the way up the tear of the paper. See? This also allows me to keep generally the same shape, which is nice. I can direct the tear, which works very nice. Okay. There we go. Just be sure not to hit yourself in the face with the the paper. Um, I, I really like to do that. All right, remember, down the corrugation, not with it, not this way. Do that, you're gonna find it's, it's much harder to tear. And you can cut it, but it will make sharper edges on your cardboard, and uh, they'll probably stick through the paper that you'll put on top of them. This really allows for a that softer connection. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we start building. I've started adding cardboard to the frame to build up my armature. An armature is basically the bones of your sculpture. Um, so uh, I have my, my really high tech um, <laughs> hanger right here that's showing me my design so I can look up and reference it. It's nice to have your design visually available for you to check. And what I'm doing is kind of taking the strips of cardboard and sometimes tearing them, trying to figure out the shapes that I need and starting to layer them. You can see this part right here 
is the bottom part right there of the of the Florida Lee. Um, and then I put just some general uh, placeholders for those little little things that uh, stick off the side there. Um, those will get built up as well. Uh, this will be the center of the Florida Lee. The, uh, the I don't know what that thing is called, but the little part that looks like it's holding them all together right there. And then it'll get built up. <laughs> I have decided to move uh, into the front room just to have a little bit more floor space and also because I can watch uh, a movie while I'm working on this. You can kind of see uh, the shape taking place from our pattern here and really all I'm doing is making an outline and then covering with strips. I did make sure to kind of give some space between um, between the top and the bottom here. So whenever uh, this thing is completed, you can see underneath here, whenever it's completed, um, the people who are purchasing this can still put a rope around this two by four and attach it to their, uh, to their uh, front porch. So, um, going to uh, continue doing this and I'll give you another time lapse so that you can see sort of how I'm building it. It's a pretty easy shape um, and um, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. We will be covering up a lot of these bumps with the thick paper uh, that I showed you earlier. <laughs> Okay, well, I got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, so here it is built and covered in paper mache paper. Uh, the paper is all dry all the way around. And I'm about to show you the technique that I used to do this on the back. Uh, this is ready to receive paint, uh, which will come after I paper mache the back. So let me show you. All right, I have my little uh, tin here set. I like this uh, old cookie tin because I can put my wallpaper paste in there and um, it doesn't go in everywhere. I can also put my pre-torn pieces of paper. Um, I don't like going any smaller than this because what's the point? Um, you can make some smaller ones. You can make some bigger ones. Uh, I make a whole bunch of different shapes, but you can see I've made a nice big pile. Um, the reason I do this is because you're going to cover your hands in that stuff and you don't want to have to be trying to tear paper or, um, or try to figure out where your paper is going to come from next. It's just right there. It's already ready to go. And by the time I get to the bottom of that, I'll be ready to take a break and go wash my hands off real good. Um, it's not necessary all the time to paper mache the back of your piece. I like to do it because it gives it a nice finished look. It also kind of ensures the longevity of the prop um, and on the back you don't have to be quite as nice and perfectionisty uh, I think I just made up that word perfectionisty as you might be on the front uh, so this is a good spot to start uh, just to kind of get your paper mache legs um, remember that I am also using the Roman Pro 543 or whatever universal stuff you can get this again small medium large here we go. All, all covered as much as I would like to do. Um, I tried to make the edges 
uh, easy to work with. Uh, I've marked the spots that I've left open. These would be attachment spots, see tie, attachment spots, attachments in the middle. Uh, if they wanna add you know, uh, more security to the sides all the way down. I've also left this open so we can add a hook or something else if this wants to be hung on the wall later. Um, basically just carefully covered the whole back. Gonna wait on this to dry and then um, it's time for paint. Time to paint. Of course I got the colors yellow, purple, green and I have a nice paint mixer here. I've got a couple of different paint brushes, um, a chip brush and something for a bit more detail. Um, a lot of people hate chip brushes but they have their place. This is good for just spreading around uh, big big spots of paint. I will tell you a nice little trick if the hairs keep falling out you can take some super glue and kind of squeeze it here at the very bottom of your brush and it'll help keep the keep the bristles uh, in your brush. I also when I first open one I like to go through and try to pull out all the extra hairs. Um, uh, if you're anything like me uh, have some paper towels around because I, I guarantee that I'm going to try to make a mess here. <laughs> shadowing just for some depth and one of the ways you can do that is take your original paint color and add a tiny tiny little bit of black you really just want the darker color of the color that you're making a shadow to um, you don't want to just use straight black well that could be a design choice but if you're really going for an effect of shadow you want to use a darker version of the color that you're making the shadow of. So I've added a little bit of shadow, um, kind of blending it in with a bit of a dry brush and um, waiting for her to dry. This is a little bit of a cherry on top and I can't seem to help myself, but I, I want to add one more thing. I've decided to add a little bit of gold leafing to the, um, the band of the floor to lee just to add a little interest. Also, gold leafing is super fun. In order to do this, you're gonna need some gold leaf. This isn't real gold, this is the cheap foil stuff. Um, you will also need um, sizing. That's what this stuff is. It's the stuff that makes it sticky, sizing. Uh, and always be sure to get a sealer. If you don't use a sealer your gold leaf is going to look pretty for like one day and then it's going to tarnish and not look so great anymore and shiny so you got to be sure to seal it and i'll show you how this is done okay your sizing should look like this sometimes people get by this stuff and it's all like solid because it's kind of just really a thin thin glue um, but it should look it should look like milk or like a real watered down milk so that you can put it on a paintbrush. Um, and then make sure your paint's dry, of course. And I would say it suggests you do small areas at a time. Don't do the whole thing, because by the time you get down here, it'll all be dry. Um, do small, small areas at a time. And then you have to wait for the sizing to get tacky. You'll know when you touch it and your finger goes, uh, it sticks to it just a little bit. I'm very impatient, so I get a uh, hair dryer. 
Shop order. All right, nice and tacky. I take my piece of gold leaf. It's nice that that these are really, really, really thin, and they want to curl up on themselves. You can see that. So it's good that they put this uh, paper here. You can kind of use the paper. Ah, it's already starting breaking. Use the paper and lay this stuff down super quick. I have a couple of nice dry brushes here. It means dry, like no, not wet even a little bit to help me push this stuff around because it really wants to kind of wrinkle up and go. Yeah, you don't have to be particularly um, careful with this. You know, just want to lay it down nicely. If it breaks apart, you could use your brush. I'm just holding a piece right now. Use your brush to pick, pick some of this out. Now it is going to make a little bit of glitter. So be careful that um, you're in a spot where you don't mind that happening. I just kind of push that all around. It is going to stick to some stuff and make it a little sparkly. But it, see how it's just sticking mostly to the sizing? That's what we want to happen. Stars shining bright above me I breathe the scene to whisper took me about 20 minutes not so bad I'm gonna let uh, the sizing set up um, you just give it a little time to rest and then I'll put the sealer on top of it it's just a clear coat I do think I'm also gonna paint the back of uh, of the prop just to seal it again and make it weather resistant it is a good idea with these pieces to always cover them if you're gonna put them outdoors cover them when it's raining and give yourself plenty of dry time, especially if you live in the American home of Mardi Gras, Mobile, Alabama, where the humidity is pretty high. Give yourself humidity time. It is where it's going to live forever and ever. <laughs> and the new proud owner, doesn't it look beautiful on her front porch? Say happy Yardi Gras to everybody. Happy, happy Yardi Gras. Gras.